Yo guys, Code Life here. So in this video today, guys, I'm going to be showcasing 10 different mouse optimizations that will improve your aim. Everything will be covered from tweaking our mouse drivers slash software to get the lowest input delay possible to applying pro mouse modifications that will reduce your mouse weight and allow you to get better grip. Literally everything will be covered in this video today, guys. So if it does help out, be sure to drop a like on the vid and subscribe to the channel. Also, be sure to check out my website, GameSettings.com to find out what mouse and more of the best pro that are using it in Fortnite, Valorant and CSGO. Now though, let's get straight into the mouse optimization, starting off with the mouse modifications first. Did you guys know that with many mice out there like the Logitech G Pro Wireless I've got in front of me here, that it's very possible to lower the weight of the mouse by removing parts that if removed won't affect the mouse in any sort of way, like the magnetic cap I've got right here on the G Pro Wireless. Literally, if you turn it over guys, you'll see the cap right here on the back and if I remove this, it doesn't affect the mouse in any way way but what it does affect is the weight as you can see there's an easy weight reduction right there and it only literally took like two seconds give this a try with your mouse at home and i can guarantee that with a lighter mouse you will feel that your aim is improving as a lighter mouse is just easier to control on your mouse pad well at least for most people unlike mongrel he obviously likes a very very heavy mouse another mouse mod is applying custom mouse gates to your mouse this is another easy way to improve your aim as you'll find that these custom mouse gates are a lot better than the default cheap mouse gates that manufacture manufacturers use by default. Take my Final Mouse Air 58 Ninja here for example. On this I found that the default skates that came with it felt really really bad on my mouse pad. So what I did is I invested in some hyperglides, I removed the old skates with a scraper and some rubbing alcohol to get all that nasty residue off and then I applied my brand new hyperglides which by the way do look beautiful looking back and you can see it looks great with the black base and then the beautiful hyperglide mouse skate it just looks insane. But since then guys I've never looked back these hyperglides feel way better on my mouse pad and glide so much smoother as well than the stock ones ever did. So trust me, if you use any type of custom mouse gates, it doesn't matter if it's these ones on screen, the hyperglides, whatever, any mouse gates, I can guarantee they'll feel better than the stock ones, or at least for older mice. I know the G Pro Wireless Super Light has got really good mouse feet by default, so it just depends on the mouse really. But for the final mouse I've got right here, I found that the custom mouse glides work way better than the stock ones ever did. Another great mouse mod is applying mouse grip to each side of your mouse. What this can do is obviously what you imagine, it can improve the grip of your mouse. And what I did here, again with my final mouse, F58 Ninja, is I bought some mouse grip from online, I cut it to size for each side of my mouse, and then I simply just stuck it on and applied it. And since then, my grip has been amazing on this mouse. It seriously improved it, at least for the final mouse, F58 Ninja, as those holes on the side can really affect your grip, at least for me with having sweaty hands. Moving on to your PC and your mouse. For many of you guys out there, you may find that your mouse hasn't been plugged in properly to your PC. To check if it has or hasn't, all you have to do is check if your mouse supports a custom USB type, so 3.1, 3.0 or 2.0, and if your mouse doesn't specifically state what USB type it is, like as you can see for my G Pro Wireless right here, it just says USB port under the spec sheet, any of these USB slots should be fine. However, if it states something like 3.0 or 3.1, it's very important that you plug your mouse into that specific slot in the back of your PC. So you'd obviously plug it into the blue one right there and not the other one which is a 2.0. By doing this guys you should see an increase in better bandwidth which can help your mouse out a ton. But again if it says something like USB port it doesn't really matter and I don't think it makes that much of a difference. If you guys use a wireless mouse you should have some type of receiver that came with it. Like you can see the Logitech G Pro Wireless does right here. It's very important guys that if you have one of these to keep it as close to the mouse as possible. To keep the latency as low as possible as that's what it does. Obviously it's communicating with the mouse and the closer it is the better. So if you guys do keep this little receiver like quite far away or even under your desk or if you don't even use the extender and just literally use the receiver in the back of your computer you guys are doing it all wrong. What you want to do instead is you want to have yours set up like this on screen ideally. You basically want to keep the receiver as close to the mouse as possible to keep that latency as low as possible. On the flip side if you guys use a wired mouse which I know many of you do what you really want to invest in is a mouse bungee as what this will do is it'll mitigate the dragging or snagging of your mouse cable on your desk. As you can see it does this pretty easily as it lifts up the cable using an arm made from a spring which reduces the friction and drag from the cable on the surface of the desk as you can see. Trust me all of you wired mouse users out there you really need to invest in a mouse bungee or you can use the budget approach which is tape. I've seen a lot of people use this and it works pretty well if you are on a super budget. Moving on to mouse 
most software tweaks. Inside of your most software, you guys can tweak a few different things to reduce input delay and increase the battery life of your mouse. To reduce input delay, you should look for a setting called report rate or pollen rate, and this should be set to the maximum option available. For most of you out there, that'll be a thousand hertz as you can see right here. But what this setting basically does is it's actually the amount of rate which your mouse reports information to your computer. So usually, as you'd expect, the higher the amount, the better, but it does depend on your PC specs. For what I recommend with this is if you've got a medium to high end PC, you should use 100 hertz or higher. For low end PCs, you should use around 500 hertz. And then for complete potato PCs that are super old, you guys might actually find that 250 hertz is better for you. But for the majority of you guys out there, anything between 500 hertz and 1000 hertz should work really, really well. For me, I've found that 1000 hertz works wonders. I really like this one, to be honest. On top of that as well, guys, if you want to increase your mouse battery life for specifically the wireless mouse users out there, what you want to do is you want to turn off any RGB lighting on your mouse. So as you can see, if I go in the Logitech software right here and just turn off all of RGB lighting on the mouse and on the logo, what this will do is it'll increase my mouse battery life and it'll also lower any sort of input delay. As the mouse now is not focused on any sort of RGB lighting, it's literally just focused on battery life and performance. To lower our mouse input delay even more, what we're going to do now is a little tweak to our mouse driver, which can be found on Windows by literally clicking on the start menu at the bottom left corner, typing in device manager, then once inside of here you want to locate the human interface devices and then you simply want to look for your mouse. If you found your mouse all you want to do is right click on it and then go to the properties menu right here and then if you go under the power management tab you want to just literally turn off this option right here guys and you'll be all good to go. Next up we're going to make sure that all of you guys are on the correct mouse sensitivity by going into our pointer speed. To find this you want to click on the start menu at the bottom left corner then you want to type in mouse settings just like that. You then want to click on the top right corner where it says additional mouse options and then simply click on pointer options right here and inside of here guys under pointer speed you want to make sure that your pointer speed setting is right in the middle on the default sixth notch so as you can see there's one two three four five and then six you want to make sure it's on that sixth notch out of the total 11 notches it's best to keep it at this guys as this will give you 100 percent mouse accuracy and if you guys do want to increase your sensitivity or lower it what you should do is you should do that in your mouse software under the dpi option right here don't do it inside of windows instead do it under the dpi option right here guys which can be found again in your mouse software or on your mouse itself most mice have a dpi button like this on screen and then finally guys we want to make sure that mouse acceleration is turned off as this feature will make your cursor move based on speed rather than physical distance when you do move your mouse. So to turn it off just go into the start menu right there again, go into mouse settings and then click at the top right corner where it says additional mouse options and under the point options right here guys you should see an option that's called enhanced point of precision. You want to make sure that this is unchecked. And after doing those 10 different mouse optimizations right there guys you should see that your aim will be improved in any game you play. So if a video helped out, drop a like on the video guys and subscribe to the channel. Also be sure to check out my website gamesettings.com to find out what mouse and more the best pros in Fortnite, Valorant and CSGO are using. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.